Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to this month's uh, LinkedIn Loving. That actually went a little bit fast. I wasn't quite ready then. Ooh, <laughs> to get myself prepared, and I wasn't quite ready then. Um, anyway, thank you, everybody, for joining me today. And welcome, Marianne Smith, as well, from Do Marketing. Thank Hi, you for Marianne. having me. This is uh, part two of customer journey marketing on LinkedIn. And actually, this is a follow on from last month's uh, LinkedIn Loving, where we were talking about how you can use uh, customer journey marketing to elevate your uh, LinkedIn results. It's all about helping you attract and then retain your dream clients, which is uh, really, really important. Um, so it's fabulous to have Marianne here because Marianne is a customer journey marketing expert. And what we've done is because customer journey marketing is such a big area, we decided to break it down into two parts. So in our last LinkedIn Loving, we were looking at the steps that you can take from a customer journey marketing perspective on LinkedIn to attract your dream clients to you. So what we're going to do in this month, well, in this session today, we're going to be looking at the steps that come after your client has decided to buy from you and why they're just as important as the first three steps. And I think that's really important. Uh, Marianne was mentioning to me that sometimes I think people overlook these three steps. So I think this is really, really important. We were having a fantastic conversation about uh, word of mouth referrals. And, you know, one of the things that a lot of clients tell me that they generate leads is from referrals. So these steps are actually critical, or at least one of them, two of them are critical in helping you get those word of mouth referrals, which we talk about as raving fans. So that's really, really important. Um, but before we start, as always, I just want to introduce LinkedIn Lovings to you. If you're new to a LinkedIn Loving, if you've not been on one before and you're wondering what the heck a LinkedIn Loving is, well, these are short, bite-sized LinkedIn learnings over lunch. They're designed to shine a spotlight on the world's leading B2B social media platform, LinkedIn, of course. Um, so every month I'm joined by a guest expert. They share their expertise on subjects that will support your LinkedIn activity and results. So I'm really delighted that we are carrying on this conversation, Marianne, because to me, I've learned so much about this customer journey marketing and it it's just, I've just realized just how powerful it is mm, if definitely. we can apply it to LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just everybody, uh, for those of you who are there live, if you do have any questions, it'd be great to make this interactive as possible. Please put any comments uh, in the chat box or the comment box as it is, um, and we can uh, look at those questions and answer them. If you're watching the recording or the replay of this, you can still put your questions um, in, in the comments and we can get back to that. So that's not a problem. So Marianne, um, do you think we should just start by recapping briefly yeah. about the first three steps? Yeah. OK, so um, the six steps to the customer journey. And last time we Let looked at it, attraction, yeah. like you said. So awareness is about your profile and being in the right place at the right time. Do your clients hang out? On LinkedIn, first of all, so you, you're showing up as your best self in terms of your photograph, your header, and really completing your LinkedIn profile. And then it's the we move to consideration, which is the them considering you from the content that you put out there. So we talked about a content strategy having an overall arch. This is what you want to be famous for. Your pillars that hold up that arch. This is these are the things you want to be known for. And then your buckets. So mine is customer journey marketing. I talk about strategy planning customer journey, customer experience, and then the book has been um, education, showcase, so being out there, um, the um, sales, which you can do, but not too much, um, timely, so what can you put out there in terms of latest legislation or the time of year, and then also um, community, so how can you help uh, with your community, which we're going to talk about more in advocacy, and then we looked at trial, and the trial has been them getting a little bit of you, but they're not quite ready to sign up so they're looking at you in terms of how you can help them and imagining um you know you helping them as well so whether you do a webinar like this or whether you you know you're giving your top tips away that's the trial of them seeing you so today we're going to look at the other three stages which i'm going to which we've broken down i'm going to kind of give you um, all the highlights from a customer journey, and then um, Judy's going to come in more with the LinkedIn side. So should yeah, I just, kick off? Uh, well, just before we jump into that, I just wanted to say, if anybody missed that first session, 
um, there is a, an article in the replay, uh, which Sarah will kindly pop in the comments. If anybody wants to go and check that out, um, do do go and have a look at that. And it's really interesting because we did give people um, the one thing they should do, the do one thing that you mentioned after that first session. And, you know, um, there was quite a few people who said they were going to be looking at doing their profile and thinking about how they come across on that awareness piece. So that'll be uh, really interesting to find out how many people have actually yeah. uh, followed through and done that. So uh, but we'll be giving everybody another little task to do won't we, at the end of this. So definitely. Uh, but yeah, so let's, yeah, so the, we've now got a client. It's wonderful. All the first three steps have generated a new client. They're ready to buy from us. So, which is fantastic. Hooray, happy days, new client. Yeah. So what do we do now? What do we do okay, now? Okay. So this this is um, looking at your um, whole onboarding process overall. So it, you know, one of the things that we're giving away as a do one thing is is look at your processes, your systems, your email that you, you you know you first set them to welcome on board who's an account manager how do they pay what, what does that look like so what you're doing is you're putting a warm blanket around them and you keep putting these layers around them which is the customer experience so that's the first thing to do is just revisit that um process so as part of linkedin are you linked in with your clients anyway so we've done all this to get them to this stage um but just making sure that you are linked in with them and, and it's the really second interesting that Sorry to interrupt you. Sorry, no, 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 I was just going to say that just something popped into my head there because I often I'll say to people, and of course, make sure you connect with your clients. And everybody goes, yeah, 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 yeah we connect with the clients, and then we do some training, and then they find out that they're not. Oh, we're not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it should be a simple yeah. step to do, shouldn't it, on LinkedIn? Yeah. And also, if you have systems for every, anything, so if you write those systems down, you can include LinkedIn connection. Yes. If you've done it in any of the other stages, that's fine. But like you said, Judy, you might have missed that off. Another thing I would recommend doing is linking with their team. Yeah, you want to stay with that yes. business. You want more business with them. So that is a really good opportunity to link in with the team, send them a friendly note that you're going to be working on X project. Um, and then also the other thing you can do is once you're connected with them, obviously you can look at their connections as well. So, you know, exactly. you've got all that fodder, all that data there through, you know, the thousand connections they've got or the 500 connections um, because you've connected with them. Um, Absolutely. Another great point there, Marianne. Sorry, I'm getting quite excited today. today. But that's a really another good point because that's another great way to generate referrals and uh, opportunity introductions. You know, uh, yeah. LinkedIn for me is the closest thing to face-to-face -to -face networking. So actually going in and seeing who do your clients know that you could they could potentially introduce you to it's a great way to go and facilitate those uh, word of mouth referrals and i love the the fact as well the another key point of why it's important to be connected with your clients is if they move jobs mm, you true. know you get the notifications or even anybody of their team moves jobs and the notifications comes up saying so and so's moved well you can then go in and go congratulations on your new job yeah. and then get in with the company they've gone to and then find out who's taken over from from where they left so so important to be connected to your clients i think and then yeah it's a yeah. double-edged sword isn't it you can find out who's replaced that person you can also like you say follow them to the next role um so you you, you know you're really connecting with the people the right connections and that means you can start and talk to them in the right way um so the next two bits is what um, Judy mentioned earlier. These are really, really key in terms of how you use LinkedIn to maximize the relationships that you've got with your clients, because we're going to touch on referrals anyway. But I just want, kind of want to run through um, how the customer journey um, relates to LinkedIn. And because now we're talking about step number five, which is retention. So as we all know, the more we look after our clients and give them that fabulous customer experience, we're not giving them any room to go to the competition because they're quite happy. And we're constantly thinking of things to add value to that relationship. So how we engage with them on LinkedIn is huge. So now we've onboarded them, we're linked in with them in the team. So the first thing, as uh, Judy pointed out, is to make sure you're connected with them. And then the other thing I would do is check their activity. So if you go on their profiles and there's a section further down that says activity, if there's nothing there, it means they haven't posted in a while. And you, you know, think about, well, maybe they're not active on, on LinkedIn. But if they are, you can see what they've posted. 
you can see yes. what they posted in the last few days you can backtrack so you can see these are the subjects that they're posting on agree judy absolutely and the other even if they haven't posted anything themselves if you actually look at their activity they may have been engaging with other people mm -hmm. so you can see what they've been engaging with and sometimes that still helps to keep you visible in front of those people um, and the other actually thing that you may want to do with your clients is there is a new bell feature on their LinkedIn profile. And if you click that bell on somebody's profile, so I have one, if anybody would like to click my bell and you'll have one, Marianne. So anybody wants to know more about LinkedIn and or customer journey marketing, go click our bells. And what happens then, uh, is that sound right? Click our bells? So anyway, <laughs> what happens then is that um, you get notified when somebody posts. So that is really, really useful way to keep um, kind of uh, notified of what your clients are doing, for sure. Exactly. Keep that conversation going. Yes. Um, so the next point I'd like to make, I refer to it as brand hero. So if you imagine you've got your clients and imagine them going into a party and they're a bit apprehensive you're kind of you're leading the way so by making them brand heroes you've got so much potential in terms of content so if they're pushing things out if they've got an event coming up a workshop or they've won an award you're there congratulating them yeah you're saying you worked with them the other day you, you're making them the hero but you're behind them pushing them on your clients seeing that in their notifications whether it's just a like or whether it's a comment and then obviously like judy said you can look at all the other comments and you can like and you can comment back so this is all around that customer engagement yeah and you know it's easy content to get out there so what, what i do in the morning i'll have a look at linkedin see what i can like what i can comment if i see any of my clients on there or if I've been to one of their events, I can, you know, really get behind it as we've done today, Judy, in terms of your event. Um, so that whole brandy um, hero. And then obviously things like referrals, which we're going to touch upon in advocacy. But, you know, people are seeing you con comment on their post. So they're starting to imagine, well, you know, what if I was a brand hero um, as part of Marianne's world? Um, so that whole retention piece for customers, but also you can use, if you think about retention, it's also for employees. So if you've got a cracking team, um, you don't want to lose them by making them heroes on LinkedIn. It's good content. You look like a good company. They absolutely love it because they may have been promoted. They may have managed an event for you. They may have made even just an endorsement of how good they are and how much they fit in the team. So, I think that's hugely beneficial for companies, especially now yeah. with recruitment so difficult, being yeah. able to promote your employees as brand heroes, I guess, is, yeah. is going to be so important um, yeah. because it actually makes you look like a company that's really good to work for as well, doesn't yeah. it? It's the values and the culture and everything that comes across. Yeah. Um, and just so I guess from our, from kind of just as sort of, clarify so you've got brand heroes from the client perspective so yeah. where you're liking and commenting on their posts and that is really valuable because that's a win-win mm. all around and that's what i say to people if you comment and like on other people's posts it's really good because you're pushing their content out onto your news feed so they it increases the reach of their posts as well as mm -hmm. increasing the visibility of you and as you say it's a really nice thing to do for your clients and you should be doing for your clients and yeah. helping build that relationship and i as so many times that I've, i know people from linkedin that i've never actually met because we just we engage and it's that engaging bit is the conversations that you're having on linkedin so that's really important but yeah. like you say you can do it for associates yeah you could do it for absolutely buyers, and you can do it for employees so it's a yeah. thinking about all this could you call them stakeholders i don't know if that's a yeah 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 but yeah. they're all different stakeholders, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you are, you know, you're showing up all the time. You are bringing that community together. Um, and it's, like I said, it's really, really easy content, you know, that you can do on a daily basis that, you know, you're being seen in the right place for the right reasons. Um, so in terms of um, in under retention, I would also like to mention LinkedIn recommendations and the number of times I look at LinkedIn profiles and they've either got no LinkedIn recommendations or they've got one. 
And I think one looks worse than none. Um, so, you know, make, even, you know, make a list of all your clients and um, reach out to them. Don't do it all in one go. I would do it like steady. Um, we worked on this project. I'm, I'm updating my LinkedIn profile. It would be fantastic if you could um, give me a LinkedIn recommendation. Um, I would also say you can do that uh, in terms of LinkedIn recommendations. You can also ask colleagues. You can ask associates. Um, it doesn't have to be people who you've worked for. Um, yeah. And I would also say if you're going to ask you must be seen to give as well so if you look at mine it's kind of balanced out um in terms of giving referrals and requesting them it's a really good point actually that um it is that give and take isn't it and that supporting yeah. each other you know they say so we're not competitive anymore we're collaborative and i think that's really important just coming back to recommendations though i know it, it can be very difficult we can request recommendations from clients and other people but you know we appreciate that everybody is busy so it's a making it easy for them to do that recommendation and the other thing that i say to um to, to people to my clients that i'm working with when we're looking at their linkedin profiles is have they already given you some kind of testimonial either on the website or via email or verbally yeah. giving you it so i have often true. you know i've got recommendations because somebody's verbally given me something and i've then typed it in to the recommendation yes. request on LinkedIn and sent it going, this is what you said the other day, would you mind if we could add Brilliant. it to my LinkedIn profile? So if they've already given you something that you can take and adapt, it just makes life easy for them in terms of giving the recommendation. Mm -hmm. If they haven't, mm -hmm. you know, um, you could either give them some questions like, you know, it was lovely to work on that project with you. You know, uh, well, we did the project because you were experienced this challenge. Mm -hmm. So did this, did the work we do uh, resolve the challenge? What were the results? So you can kind of guide them to in creating that recommendation because yeah. sometimes starting something from scratch is really difficult, isn't it? They've got yeah. to, and that, you know, so that's just my my little thoughts there. <laughs> yeah, and not, yeah, and how how good do we feel when we get a LinkedIn recommendation? So you're yes. you giving them, you are you know extending that kind of relationship that you've got with a client with a an associate um or with a colleague so i think now we're going to move particular, yeah definitely. yeah exactly now yes, we're going to move on to step six which judy and i believe is you know as with retention this is huge so this is about being um a good business okay what do you want people to say about you so one of the things to think about in advocacy is your community so um, so if you think of either your community by the local community in Leeds, for instance, if you think of it by sector. So if if, you know, I'm signed up to the Chart Institute of Marketing, I'm signed up to other um, organizations. If I'm being seen to comment, that kind of raises the bar a bit in terms of. I'm helping my sector. Also, your community in terms of work. So going back to the employees and referrals and associate, you know, it's widening your community and creating mad these mad fans that we talk about. Um, <laughs> another thing is um kind of you becoming that influencer by the posts that you're putting out there. So if you think about thought leadership, so I'm always talking about marketing. I'm always talking about the customer journey, customer experience to the point people will now include me in their posts and they know me for being the one who talks about customer journey. So if you're being seen as an expert, of course, you're going to be top of mind when uh, people need products or services like yours. Um, if you're doing any events or workshops, exactly like um judy's doing here judy do you want to comment on that side yes absolutely i mean so i think for me the linkedin lovings as i was saying to you when we were talking about this advocacy step for me has a number of benefits because a it helps me build relationships with people who can support me and my clients yeah uh with with um, expertise and things like that it's also putting me out there i'm hoping <laughs> in a positive light and that um you know that people can see that we're sharing that expertise which we hope will be of value and the at the same time it also helps me with that awareness piece in terms of creating the content uh, or the consideration piece in terms of the content because yeah. what i do with this is that there's all the promotion before the event so i i invite my 
I invite people on LinkedIn and I invite my lists and tell them about the event. We have mm -hmm. the actual event itself. And then after the event, I turn that content into an article. Mm -hmm. So it's giving me content um, around the pillars that you talk about and the budgets yeah. around content that I can then push out. So I think, you know, it's 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 marketing, isn't it? You know, it's about how are we going to Absolutely. get in front of our people? How do we get seen? And I think the thought leadership piece for me is really important because a lot of people struggle with creating content. I, yeah. I will put my hand up. I am not a natural content creator. I'm not. So the, for me, this is a great vehicle to do it, to actually yeah. create, create some content. But the other way you can do it is have that third party content. And I'm, uh, you know, like you were saying, it's it's about having your finger on the pulse of what's happening in your industry. Yeah. What is important for your audience to know and understand and translating that so that they get a really good idea of what of what's going off and why it's important for them to, to know. So I always liken this to like uh, accountants and budget time. There's no point an accountant going, oh, there's been a new budget. Read what was in it because that yeah. adds no value. If they go through, right, okay, well, the new budget's been announced and I think the key thing for business owners that they need to be aware of is X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z. And they, they translate it and make it easy to um, understand and digest and things like that. And that's where you, I think, for me, that's this advocacy piece. If I'm Absolutely. Right, thinking, and if you mentioned accountants, if that accountant is subscribed to accountancy publications, it's easy for them. that's probably coming into, you know, into his emails every day. He takes that as a link. He puts it in his um, LinkedIn post, but he absolutely gives his commentary on that. Yeah. So, Summarizes the article, why it's important yeah. and what's the key things for people. Yeah. Showing themselves as an expert. Um, not just the publication that it's it's come from. So really think about what publications you can sign up to, yeah, and absolutely. you know now and then put something out there giving that your your expertise away and you're part of this community. Um, so part of um, community is also charity. Being seen um, as a good advocate of business in the charities you support or the charities you get behind. So you know. Leeds Marathon, get behind it. Any, any, your personal charities. It's your Cash being seen. Kids now at this time of year. Yeah, being seen as a good business in your community. Um, and now we're going to talk about the best bit referrals. And this is what this is where you're going to get, you know, more work from the content you put out, from your profile that you've got. Um, you know how you come across on LinkedIn in terms of other businesses. You know, you're creating that head turn. And people are thinking, I'm not getting that off my accountant. I'm not getting that from um, the team that I'm working with already. And look at what they're putting out in terms of tips, advice, the webinars they're putting on there, the commentary on LinkedIn. So that is huge. And this is, goes all the way back to awareness. And when you think about it, if you look at these six touch, touch points, the crossover as well. So we were talking about the LinkedIn lovings. That's part of Judy's trial. That's getting a little bit of Judy, then checking her out on her website. So you can see how there's a crossover. Um, yes. So I think top tip for this one, list the communities that you're going to be, you can be involved in and make sure you're connected with those people. Um, anything else on advocacy, Judy? So I... Um... I did a post and I didn't realize that they fell into advocacy. So I, I think the, yeah. the, the whole referral thing. So if we, there's, you know, if you are making your clients a brand hero, so either with, if you're talking about projects that you've worked on and using that as content and you're posting and you're bigging them up, basically, that's yeah. what we mean, isn't it? Or it's a charity, you're bigging them up. Or I did it for, um, I'm, I'm super excited because I've sponsored a woodland, um, as part of uh, rewilding Yorkshire, it's done by Make It Wild, and I've I've talked about how I've got this wood. And for me, this is it's a bit like corporate social responsibility, isn't it? So sustainability yeah. goals, your environment goals, your people goals, your charity goals, and it's talking about all those other things as well. And then, in terms, especially from a client perspective, because what you're doing by making them the brand heroes is that a you're staying top of mind for them. Mm -hmm. But also the people in their network will be seeing them. And, mm -hmm. you know, anybody says, oh, I could, do, what's this customer marketing journey thingy yeah. about? And they'll go, oh, Marianne, you know, you're mm -hmm. top of mind instantly. 
for referrals. You know, I, uh, I had somebody pop into my inbox on LinkedIn because uh, I um, they'd, somebody, they'd been having a chat with somebody in my network and my name came up around LinkedIn training. Well, that's yeah. exactly where I want my yeah. name coming up. And that's yeah. exactly where you want your name coming up in terms of customer marketing, uh, journey, yeah. uh, customer journey marketing, forget my words out, right? And that's yeah. what the referrals is about. And so how do you get that? How do you get your name coming up when somebody's talking about what it is you want to be famous for, which yeah. takes us back to that awareness piece, isn't it? What do you Absolutely. want to be famous for? Be talking about that. Be an advocate. Be talking about what you're doing with your clients. Promote your clients. Support your clients. Support your associates, mm -hmm. uh, suppliers. And, and it's just about keeping your visibility up there, isn't it? It is. And I think what we concluded in our conversation that people think LinkedIn is all about attraction, you know, what we talked about last time. But if we're going into the why, which is what I say to all my clients, why now? We're going into 2023. There's a lots of gloom on the, on the, in the media. So retention is key. Customer experience is absolutely key for, for 2023. So if there's just one thing that you can do from this, just think about the clients that you've got already and how can you maximize the relationship that you've got with them by using a platform um, like LinkedIn and really getting to understand the, the three remaining steps and where LinkedIn comes um, into each one. So I'm just looking at the time. I think one of the things that we, we, we always say is, is I'd like to wrap it up with a do one thing. This is anything you're going to do from today's session is to create your content strategy, is your, your arch, your fame, your pillars that hold them up and the five buckets. If anybody uh, wants a reminder of the five buckets, just email myself or Judy. Um, because what you're doing with your content, you are creating raven fans. And that's what we want. We need to be that taller poppy in the field, a standout, particularly as we approach 2023. Agree, Judy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, customer, I was looking online about, you know, customer journey marketing. And they were saying, like, it's the new way to do business, isn't it? You know, yeah. we have to put our clients first. And, yeah. you know, because that's the competitive, you know, if if we are, like you said earlier, if we are serving our clients, if we're giving them the best experience, they will not only stay with us, so retention, but they will yeah. also be raving fans and they will promote us left, right and centre and refer us. And that, and I think that's for me is, a, is the, the actual hub of, of it mm. all. And so... I think obviously we're just talking about it from a LinkedIn perspective, but obviously customer journey marketing is across the whole part of your whole of your business, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and you, you need a strategy. I'm a big believer in strategy. Yeah. <laughs> you need a strategy for LinkedIn. You need a strategy for your customer journey marketing. I'm sure. Um, so I'm a I'm a huge believer in. I think that you know going forward, definitely this it's all about the customer experience and how we're supporting and serving people. Absolutely. Um, we do have a link just before we go. Um, so I do think that welcome, that create that wow. You have a guide. If I'm just going to um, add this now. So this is your lovely guide, uh, how to wow people from day one. So this actually focuses on the welcome uh, stage of the customer journey. We don't, um, there's probably, as we said, there's less probably significance around LinkedIn here. Uh, apart from making sure you connect with your ideal clients and uh, follow their company pages. That would be another good thing to do. Uh, but this is great. So if anybody actually wants this guide, uh, do get in touch with Marianne. You can email her um, or connect with her on LinkedIn. Um, yep. You can put the cop your, your uh, LinkedIn profile uh, in there and people can grab that. I think that's really useful. I've got this. I'm going through mine uh, now, making sure that my welcome is as well as it can be um so that's really really fantastic so and there's 22 tips in there there's oh, 22 yes, so you don't tips. have to do all of them yeah you wouldn't you? believe you it but when i started one. yeah 22 things you can do so even if you choose a few it would add value to your, your welcome window that's incredible isn't it 22 ways to wow your your client when you first come on there yeah it's amazing and actually we have i have seen it with people who send thank you cards mm. you get a little you've said that as one of your tips yeah. isn't it and you get a little yeah card uh, in the post which i think is lovely uh going you know welcoming people and it's just 
I've seen um, uh, Deborah Ogden sends you a little bar of chocolate and welcome she nice. welcomes you to her impact club. It's just really nice. These are t customer touch points, aren't they? And they're just Absolutely. really making it, it reinforces that they've made the right decision by choosing to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's Wonderful. It. So Excellent. we didn't get any questions today, which I'm a bit disappointed with, but um, not to worry. If anybody actually thinks of any questions after they've either listened again to this or, or whatever, just either pop it in the comments below the company page where this will be playing or get in touch with myself or with Marianne, of course, because Marianne's a customer journey expert, not me. <laughs> so, but that's wonderful. That's great. Thank you very much indeed. It's been another super, super event. Super Thank you. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we close it off, Marianne? Or No, I just think, you know, everyone just look at your LinkedIn profile. That's the starting point. And yeah. imagine um, a potential client looking at it and go yeah. from there. Put yourself in your client's shoes. Yes, hour, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Get feedback is what I say to people. Get some mm. friendly people to look at your profile and give the, give you feedback. Yeah, absolutely. So that's you can do. But, <laughs> thank you for having me over the last two sessions i've really enjoyed it and like judy said if anybody's got any questions on the customer journey overall please do email me or dm me on linkedin yeah thank that's you. fantastic and thank you so much for sharing all your top tips with us marianne it's been brilliant thank, thank you, you so much all right thank you mm -hmm.